welcome back to Beyond Film School, where I teach you all about the film industry. I'm Amber, and in this video, we are going deep into the unit production manager position in film. Before we jump into all those UPM, I just want to say hello to all my amazing, loyal subscribers, and I want to welcome anyone who is new to my channel. With Beyond Film School, I try to give you the leg up in the industry and try to make the industry better. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all the videos I make on the film industry. All right, so let's jump right into the world of the UPM. What is a UPM? UPM stands for Unit Production Manager. That's their official title and sometimes you might just see Production Manager. And no, they are not line producers. A lot of people out there do tend to make that mistake. They are two different positions, but they do work closely together. The UPM reports to the line producer. So the line producer is the UPM's boss, but sometimes, now this is where it gets tricky. Sometimes they are indeed the same person. You might have on smaller projects, one person being the UPM and the line producer. So there's gonna be one person covering all those responsibilities. It does happen on bigger things, there's usually a line producer and a UPM. So now that that trickery is out of the way, let's get back to what is a UPM. The UPM is the overseer of production as a whole. They make sure that a project that's put in front of them gets made, first and foremost, and hopefully on budget. Ultimately, they execute the plan that was put together in pre-production, and they try not to break the bank while doing it. <laughs> They're managing the day-to-day -day business side of production. This can be anywhere from if the crew goes into overtime to if a hairstylist needs more hairspray. Or maybe if the director of photography has to hire a steady cam operator for the day to making sure that the caterers have enough food for everyone on set. Basically, the UPM is a resource manager and their resource is money. Say the UPM executes the production plan admittedly is pretty vague. So let's get into the more specific responsibilities. And we're gonna break this down into stages. Pre-production, your prep, your production, your principal photography, and then after a production wraps. During pre-production, the UPM is drawing up a logistical plan for production, how to actually get the movie or project made. On bigger scale productions, the UPM, while working with a line producer, will receive a budget from the line producer. While drawing up the plan for production and prep, the UPM is going to make sure to stick to the budget. And then they break that budget down into each department. What does each department get? What are their needs? How much is gonna go toward personnel and equipment? The UPM is also working with the first AD, the first assistant director, on creating a shooting schedule. The first AD does in fact create a shooting schedule, but then the UPM is going to make sure that that shooting schedule is actually feasible or not. First AD will take a script, they will break it down, they'll make a schedule and say, you know what, we need about 30 days to shoot this movie. And then the UPM will say, you know, we only have enough in the budget for 21 days of shooting as far as equipment rental and paying the crew. So then the first AD will take it back, rework it, try to squeeze every Everything into 21 to 22 days. That extra week and a half or so of paying the crew and renting equipment is a lot of money. So there's a big difference in budget from 30 days of shooting versus 21 days of shooting. The UPM will also sometimes hire crew. They're not hiring everybody on the crew. Um, that responsibility is shared by producers and line producers, but they do sometimes hire folks. For example, they're gonna hire the first AD. Maybe they might hire the head of the hair department or the sound mixer. They're also working with certain vendors. For example, they're hiring the caterers or maybe craft services, uh, the visual effects team that might be needed, or maybe additional labor that is needed for certain days on the project. For example, on those hospital shows like, you know, Grey's Anatomy, New Amsterdam, ER, I think Chicago Med is another one. If they're showing actual surgeries, they wanna make sure that those things are accurate. So they'll hire an operating nurse or a consultant for the day to make sure that what we're doing is actually right. They're also handling the contracts for those said vendors and consultants or additional labor. They're also overseeing location scouting and how much it might take to get a location. So for example, a director might totally be in love with something, but it might be too expensive or it might be too small to compensate a whole entire crew. So they're kind of keeping the big picture in mind when it comes to location as well. So that location might be loved by the director and the UPM might say this is not 
financially feasible, it is their job to try and make it work somehow. Like maybe they want to take money from a different location and put it toward another one. So there's like this weird compromise push and pull when it comes to like really wanting a specific thing when it comes to the vision of the director and the project as a whole. And again with locations, the UPM is going to make sure that the contracts for those locations actually happen and they were given to the location and we're all good. Usually the contracts are given to location managers to handle, but the UPM is making sure that it actually happened and that location's locked for when we need to actually shoot there. And that also applies to any of the permits that are needed for locations, for certain locations that you're going to shoot. The UPM is also figuring out your transportation needs. How many trucks, trailers, passenger vans, cube trucks, how much is needed on what days and how much is all that gonna cost? They're like doing a lot so far. This is like a ton of stuff. And don't forget about housing because the UPM, when you have those distant locations or maybe they're in a rural area for uh, a week or they're upstate somewhere random in the middle of, you know, Iowa or something and they're bringing a crew in, they have to figure out housing accommodations for the casting crew. And don't forget and how much that is gonna cost them. There are a bunch of budgetary decisions in all of that that I just mentioned, but don't think they're doing it all on their own. They have a bunch of people that are going to be helping them with all of this. They have production coordinators, there's an assistant production coordinator, there are office PAs, there, there's a ton of people who are helping them do this. But again, on your smaller scale indie productions, they are kind of doing this all on their own and they're kind of alone, just doing it all by themselves. into production, principal photography, what are UPMs doing when we're actually shooting? A lot, of course. This is where it gets interesting. All that planning we did in prep, well, now the UPM is going to make sure that it all goes according to that plan. Their main agenda here is to make sure that the movie or whatever they're working on actually can get made without hemorrhaging money. During prep, the UPM of course is in the office, uh, going on location scouts and all that, but when we're shooting, they're on set about 70 to 80% of the time, and they usually look like this. Yeah, I, I think we can do that. I think, well, if you want that, it's going to be a little bit more expensive and we're going to have to... The rest of that time, it's them usually trying to answer hundreds of emails. And those emails primarily consist of a lot of people asking for more money. They will approve, or not, things that people are asking for while shooting. For example, like that hairspray I mentioned before. And uh, maybe some things got switched around, which means more casts are coming in for the day, and they need to be picked up, which means more vans, and more vans mean more van drivers, which costs more money. Those changes and things like that might not have been in the initial plan that they talked about in prep, because maybe they ran over a day, they had to punt a scene to the next day, things got flip-flopped in the schedule. So for example, a day that was only going to cost $10,000 now costs about $20,000. And this is where UPM really comes into play because then they got to like play Tetris and they got to move things around. Another responsibility of the UPM is to make sure that the director, the producers, and the line producer are all aware of some of these budgetary changes in the initial plan. If for some reason there's going to be changes in the budget, they have to make sure everyone's aware of that and give the reasons why those things are happening. Getting into more of the little details from the day to day, the UPM will approve meal penalties if we're going to go into lunch penalties, dinner penalties, if the crew's going to go into overtime, things like that. And those things are going to be told to them by the first AD when they tell them where they are in the day. Like, do we need to finish the scene before lunch because the sun's going down and we're shooting outside, stuff like that. That was on the smaller end. And, and on the bigger end, maybe the director changes their vision. And now they're asking for a lovely big crane shot, a huge establishing wide of the entire scene. And that was not initially in the shot list or the plan. The UPM has to make sure that they have enough money in the budget to actually rent that techno crane and actually pay the crew that operates the techno crane. If that crane shot is gonna 
lift the production quality of that film or whatever project it's on and the director really really wants it and it's going to really make a difference then the UPM is going to try to make it happen. They're going to pull money from other departments and give it to that techno crane and that camera department and anyone that needs to be given money to make that shot happen. So they're working on how to make things happen. How to make it work when it comes to the vision. They're also making sure that the crew is happy and safe. They're making sure that safety precautions are taken. And making the crew happy is a huge one. A perfect example of this is like the caterer that you're hiring. If no one is happy with the food, you have a very, very unhappy crew. And then as a UPM, I would think about changing your caterers because I think that's just a small thing. If maybe a few extra dollars per head will make it a little bit better and people happier and they work better, then do it. So yes, the UPM has the power to change the type of food you are getting on set. They are always thinking ahead. So if there are certain crew that's needed, locations that's needed, permits, contracts, actors, special equipment, certain things are rented and ready to go. Everything is ready for when you are about to shoot. So they are making sure that whatever's happening next week, we have it we have it ready. Whatever's happening tomorrow, we have it ready. They're thinking about the future, but also what is happening today and changing. So they kind of have to be flexible and problem solving oriented to make sure that whatever is changing day to day, they can pivot and make sure that things will work going forward. So for example, say we're shooting billions and they're talking about renting Bobby Axelrod's car for Friday and Monday. And then the director says, you know what, we don't really need that scene that has been omitted. And maybe we're shooting, you know, we're maybe on like Tuesday and they're talking about Monday of next week. Well, if you tell the UPM that we need to cancel that car by Monday, then it's great to know because then they're not wasting the money. So they know in advance they can cancel it, save a little bit of money, and then put that money elsewhere for other changes in the future. So another scenario, we're going to use the car again. So we have Bobby Axelrod's car in Billions. They initially needed it for Friday and Monday his car, right? So then the director says, oh, we need it for an additional day on Tuesday. And then you're probably thinking, what happens when the UPM says no? For whatever reason, the movie cannot afford another day to rent this car. And maybe it might be a scene that's not really needed. So that is when rewrites happen. If you do not have the money <laughs> to rent said thing for a shot or a scene that is needed, maybe instead of Bobby Axelrod, you know, driving in, now he's walking down the street, or maybe he's taking an Uber. <laughs> because renting that high-end car is gonna be way more expensive than an average car that, that we already have, you know, in stock to utilize. So during production, the UPM is making sure that we stay on budget, but also give the crew the tools they need to do the job that best they can. UPMs have to understand the project that is getting made. There's no point in saving a bunch of money when it accumulates to a piece of trash project that no one wants to watch. This is some hot garbage! Their job is not creative, but they have to create a work environment that nurtures creativity. So all the craftspeople, all the crew, all the creative people that are making things happen, they can do their job and they can do their best work. They have to be sensitive and empathetic to that. Or else, why are we even doing this? You know, like, why are we even making this movie? What are UPMs doing once shooting is wrapped and principal photography is done? They're basically keeping tabs on everything that needs to be returned that was rented. And let me tell you, there's a lot of equipment rentals. They're also supervising wrap out days. They a lot how much department gets to wrap out of, you know, certain locations, the stages, or, you know, wrapping out the trucks and returning them back to the lot. They're also harassing the crew about the damn walkies. <laughs> Make sure you return your walkies, people. Make sure that last day when you're wrapped, you give that walkie right back to that walkie PA because, man, you are going to get 15 emails about returning your walkie in bricks and the MiFi's. For the love of God, just return your walkies. Also during this stage, they're kind of going over the budget as a whole, counting the receipts, if you will. They're making sure that everything is copacetic and it all kind of, everything balances, the book balances, the budget is balanced and hopefully they didn't hemorrhage money and they're like, how did we do? They're concerned with how everything went after shooting is done and they're like, did we stay on budget? Did we go over? Did we save some money? 
Now let's cover some characteristics and skills of UPMs. The first major one is that you must be organized. Sweet Jesus, that is like the bare minimum for a UPM. You have to be organized. You're so organized. Show me that checklist again. The next major one is the ability to say no, and this is hard for some people. So if you can't say no to people, then uh, you, you really shouldn't be a UPM. You gotta be able to decipher whether or not it is needed, and if it's not, you're like, no, I'm sorry, I can't give you extra money for that crazy gimbal you want to rent for literally no reason. But going into that saying no thing, you have to use your judgment. You have to have good judgment, like making those good judgment calls because it's not about just saying no to everybody in every department, because you have to think about the overall vision of the project and making sure it gets done successfully and hopefully in great quality, because you don't wanna box in your crew and your director or the vision as a whole. You have to have the ability to say no to the needless things, but also this is where negotiating skills come in and compromising, because you may not have it initially in the budget to give that crazy techno crane to the director, but if you kind of compromise or negotiate with other departments to take from here or there, then you can give them this thing. Or maybe you're telling the camera department, like, I give you this techno crane for this day, then I'm taking maybe the steady cam away another day. So negotiating skills really go far as a UPM. How do you know when something is needless or not for what you're trying to shoot, for what you're trying to make? Well, this is where your film experience comes into play. Your skills, your hard skill of being on set over and over, project after project, your film experience is going to tell you if that thing is needed for that scene. So film experience, you're not going to really be going into a UPM position uh, straight away, like straight out of film school. You need some film experience under your belt. You're definitely gonna need communication skills, uh, people skills 100%, and of course, leadership skills. And also, along with your leadership skills, your empathy goes a real long way. Also, to tack on with your film experience, knowing the union rules, because your union rules are going to dictate how you are going to save a little bit of money when it comes to mill penalties or your NDBs, your non-discounted break. So knowing your union rules and making sure you're not violating any of those union rules when you're shooting you gotta know that stuff. So that's also another skill you have to know, union rules, for all the unions that come together on your set. This may not be a skill or kind of is, or it's just something that's needed when you're a UPM. Because when you start becoming a UPM uh, more and more, you're building relationships with vendors. You are going to be having a working relationship with vendors and hopefully you can keep bringing them on. And if you have a working relationship with them, you can negotiate better deals or it just, it's easier when you're trying to look for certain things when you're thinking about vendors. When you have good, healthy work relationships with your vendors, it makes your job as a UPM so much easier. You also have to know your way around a budget. Making one, know a little bit about accounting, because as I said on the smaller projects, you might be making that budget and you might also be the accountant. I mean, know your way around a buck because you're gonna be the one controlling who gets what? Who gets no money? Who gets more money? Help me, I'm poor. Ultimately, as a UPM, you want to make it work for your crew and for the project as a whole. I mean, they say that this position is not creative, but man, you are coming up with some very creative solutions for all the problems that you're going to encounter. Certain skills like seeing the little details, being detail-oriented, or seeing the big picture, the UPM has to have a taste of both of those because there are little details that the UPM has to get down and dirty with, but also they have to see the big picture and the whole scope of the project. Many UPMs have worked as location managers, as assistant directors, production coordinators, and also some accountants have become UPMs. One thing I will tell you, if you wanna be a UPM, you have to work on set and you have had to work in the office because it's both worlds. You have to have experience both on set and in the office. You can't just do one because you have to know how both of those worlds work. When it comes to the union world, just one quick note, the UPM, your unit production manager, they're in the DGA, the Directors Guild of America, and they get a pretty nice rate for all that they do. So very deserving, and if you ask me, they probably deserve more money for all that they deal with.
Tell me in the comments what you think of the UPM responsibilities because they are doing a lot and they are super vital to film production. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all the videos I make on the film industry. If you're looking for more film career resources, hit up my website beyondfilmschool.com. There's a ton of stuff there. I have set PA classes happening online, in person, resume workshops, I have my blog there's a ton of stuff there for you to utilize to help you in your film career. And if you want to see what I'm up to on set, follow me on Instagram at Beyond Film School. I'm always posting. And if you want, tag me in your post. I would love to see what you guys are doing on set. Thank you so much for watching. That is it for now. And I shall see you next time.